All right, so in this video, we're going to take this normal photograph here and apply a comic book effect to it. Now, I've spent a lot of time researching different uh, comic book effects that people have come up with, and I kind of just toyed around, came up with my own here. And this was something I had actually shown in Boston at Photoshop World. And the beauty of this technique is that you can apply it to virtually any photograph just by tweaking the settings as you go along, and you can get a pretty interesting comic book, kind of a half-tone, really saturated look on any photograph. So let's begin by going into our image and we're going to duplicate our background layer. And I'm going to go into the filter menu and go down here to blur. We want blur. Go down into the very bottom to surface blur. Now, reason we're going to do surface blur is that we want to remove a lot, of, as much of the detail around her face and all this area right in here but still maintaining the sharpness of the edge lines and you know all the details like the eyes and the mouth and everything like that you can see that those edges and details remaining intact whereas the, the texture of the skin is very smoothed out and that's exactly what we want here now of course the settings used here will depend on your image of course and the resolution of your image but what I've discovered obviously is that the radius of 20 and threshold of 15 works on this image pretty good so with that done we'll hit OK and I'm going to drag and duplicate this layer, this layer we just blurred. I'm going to make a duplicate of that one. And we're going to remove the color information from this layer by simply pressing Shift-Command-U. That would be Shift-Control-U in Windows. And there leaves us with a grayscale version. Then we're going to load the luminosity of this layer as a selection. And that's done by pressing Option-Command-Tilde, which is that little wavy line key next to the number 1 or that would be alt control tilde on a PC but you can also load the luminosity as a selection in the channels panel here if we click and activate the channels at the very top the RGB channel if you hold down your command key and simply click on that layer or that channel it will load the luminosity of that channel which is the composite channel of course as a selection so it's the same as using that keyboard shortcut it's just going in the channels and doing it manually now so we have that selection. Let's go ahead and create a new layer. Now I need to invert the selection. Now, now as we've done, we've loaded the luminosity as a selection, but I want to invert it because I want the darker areas to be an active selection. So let's press Shift Command I, that would be Shift Control I in Windows. Or you can simply go into the Select menu and go to Inverse. And with that selection inverted, let's go ahead and fill it with black. So black is my foreground color, so I'm just gonna press Option Delete. And let's just deselect that. So now I have all the layers in place to create my effect. I'm actually going to turn off these top two layers and go back to this original colored layer that we ran the surface blur on. And we're going to go under the filter menu and we're going to go to artistic and run the cutout filter on here. And we'll get this window opened up here and what you'll see is I've got the number of levels all the way to eight. I want to go as high as I can with that. And the edge simplicity, I'm going to leave it zero. You can see if I push it over that those edges get really, really kind of soft like that. And that re that's really not what I want. So I'm just going to leave it at zero so it maintains a fair amount of detail. And the edge, fide edge fidelity, I'm just going to leave it three. We'll just hit OK. Then I'm going to duplicate that layer and change its blending mode to soft light, which is right there. And that will get those colors a little bit more saturated, giving us... Uh, much more deeper color there. Now let's activate that grayscale layer that we removed the color information on and we're going to go under filter again and this time we're going to go to artistic poster edges. We'll get this window up, let me move this into place and I'm going to leave the edge thickness, the intensity and the posterization all to one. You can see that it's given me a, a pretty interesting outline effect and with the posterization at one it's given me fewer levels of gray here. If I push this over, you'll see it gets a lot more, which you can certainly experiment with if you want to get another interesting effect on your image. But in this case, I'm just going to leave it at one and hit OK. Now, I need to change the blending mode of this layer to multiply. And you see that it does blend in there, but it's a little dark because of those gray areas. Well, we're going to lighten those up by bringing up our levels dialog. Let's go into image adjustments levels now 
The black areas are simply black, so I'm just going to not mess with those. But I am going to take the, the white slider here and push it in until those gray areas become white, revealing more of that area beneath, giving me more of that color. So let's kind of push this over. You see that the dark, dark areas, those black areas, are not being affected at all. So I'll push that to around 150. It looks pretty good. And we'll hit OK. So if I turn off that, if I put this back on normal, you see what happens is we've taken that grayscale layer and just really lightened up the lighter areas or the really light gray areas. We just made them more white so it would re re reveal more of that area beneath. So we'll put that back to multiply. Now lastly, let's activate this layer at the very top. That is that black area that we fill inside of our selection. I'm going to load this layer as a selection by holding down my command key or the control key, clicking directly on it. Then with that active selection, I'm going to click directly on the layer mask icon here. And that will co create a layer mask. And it looks, as you can see, like an inverted layer mask. Then, working on the layer mask itself, you can see that's indicated by the little outlines here. We're making sure that we're working directly on that layer mask. We're going to go into the filter menu again. And this time we're going to go to pixelate color halftone. And I'm going to set the radius to about 5. And that's all, I got, all I'm going to change in this window. Let's just hit OK. And you can see we're getting an interesting effect here. But now I'm going to invert the layer mask. So still active on that layer mask, I'm going to press Command or Control I. And go back and select that normal layer. Let's change the blending mode of this overall layer to overlay. And there you can see we're getting very interesting. Let me just zoom in here. Very interesting halftone, kind of comic book effect. And we just did that on just a few layers and several filters to get us a really cool comic book effect you can try on almost any photograph. So there you have it, Blammo.